This game's not one on social media. This game's not one on telephones. This game is one with shoulder pads, helmets, mouth guards, and sweat. That's how the game is won. Neese's Coach or So of Week 1. I'm your host, Chip Pair. With us is head coach Bill Neese. Uh, Indians opened up their season last Friday against Lima Senior, falling just a little short, 36-31. to 31. Coach, uh, certainly it was a lot of optimism and still a lot of optimism in the air uh, as we are in the early part of the season. Uh, coach, that game had a lot of opportunities for the Indians to come out and, and come up on top. Indians fall short, but there were a lot of bright spots if you look at it. I think there was. I think uh, you know a couple of bright spots in, in you know, in terms of the game resulted from the, some of the bad things that happened, and that is there was three times during the course of the game that we found ourselves down, and three times we battled our way back. And uh, I think one of the things that showed, you know, for me, from my perspective, and, we, you know, we've got a new group of guys, and we're still, you know, trying to, you know, feel each other out a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, how people are going to perform under pressure, and I think that answered a lot of questions in my mind on how these guys react, you know, when, when, when things, you know, hit, hit when adversity hit and I was proud of the fact of their battle back and their uh, you know never say die attitude coach it was right from the get-go uh, we were down we find ourselves down uh, two scores and we uh, put ourselves in a position where we're up 14 to 12 and again the ball is uh, in our court so to speak mm -hmm. there, there were a lot of good things that we were doing as you mentioned there are some things that we've got I'm sure grow on we'll talk about that a little bit later but from from a and then down 31, uh, excuse me, 30 to 24, and then to take the lead late in the game. Uh, yeah, that was a heck of a drive. I, I don't know that we've had a drive like that in a while. It reminded me of the, uh, I think the last time we had just a really crunched out drive like that was, uh, if people remember, two years ago with, against uh, Cincinnati Withrow, where we mm -hmm. drove the ball 99 yeah. yards down the field and, and just iced it. And I kind of got that same feeling that, that that was happening. Our line did a heck of a job. Uh, you know, it was just it was just four and five yards a shot. And you know, at some some points they had you know they were they were they were you know throwing in different you know groups of people in the box and you know things on those lines. But I thought we played well. I thought our coaches did an excellent job of maintaining their focus. You know that that's kind of tough. People don't realize that when you're, you're you know you're calling plays and, and you got to you know the good part is you got a 12 play drive. The bad part is you got a 12 play drive. You got to keep mixing it up. Should I stay with the same thing? Should I try to you know have the quarterback boot out now? Should we go ahead and try to go over the top? Those are all the things. In Involved, and so you got to have that, that fine line as to what's going on. Well, you got new coaches in different positions uh, mm -hmm. this year too. Uh, so again, you mentioned you're all trying to look, feel each other out and get yeah. a feel for what's going. Uh, you talk about the, the the game, the length of the game. It was a long game. It was uh, three and a half hours, and there was a lot of times where there was injuries, uh, there was equipment changes, um, there were guys cramping up on both sides. Uh, but the one thing that I really felt that it was to me or to, to a lot of people watching the game as well, the, the whispers in the, in the stands were, hey, we're in better shape than this team. And conditioning was certainly, I'm sure, Coach, it's something we're always looking to build, but our conditioning was certainly there. And that's always the biggest question mark when you go in the first game of the season. Did, did, did we condition enough? Did we do what we're supposed to do? You know, you want to come to that first game healthy, but you also, and fresh, but you also want to come in and make sure you're in shape and you don't want to, you know, to, to have people going down right and left. And I thought our kids performed pretty well, you know, for a game of that length. I also thought for a, a, a number of people People that had played that are playing for the first time you know those guys they played a little bit but it, it's your turn to step up to the next rung of the ladder and, and when you step up to the next rung of the ladder the view becomes different mm -hmm. you know than, than when you were down here and and you know when you're down here you're just seeing you know a bunch of 
you know, a bunch of stuff, so to speak. But as you get higher up, it becomes more clear. You can look at you can, you're going to get a better picture, and you also have more responsibility. And I thought those guys did a good job. The guys that needed to step up to the next level of continuing to focus, continuing to play the game. Coach, the one thing that uh, you harp on a lot when we talk in years past, and, and I know it's not changed for you, is the one key uh, stat you can look at this and that. And there are a lot of things that were even uh, when you look at the, the stat sheet for Friday night. But the one thing that uh, was that, that stood out was the turnovers, and that's something I'm sure you've addressed. But that's something that really is a, is a key, particularly when you're young and you're trying to uh, you know mm-hmm. make some make some plays. Yeah. You got to really take care of. Take well, care our, of our, you know our, our two big emphasis always. Two big emphasis are turnovers and big plays, and and th- those are the two things that that you can kind of control a little bit with yourself. You know, big plays come from sometimes not 100% effort, and turnovers come from not just not believing that the football is sacred, that it has got to be taken care of. And the worst part of the turnover deal is we talked about this today. I don't know if people know that, that we taped the show on Monday, so we, it's right after practice. So our Monday meeting today is uh, not only did we turn the ball over, but three of those turnovers led directly to scores. It's one thing to fumble the football, but, a lot, but to have somebody pick it up and run it in for a touchdown, it's one thing to fumble a football, but not fumble it as you're crossing the goal line. And it's one thing to throw an interception, but not on a far sideline and have somebody run it back for a touchdown. So th- those are the things we addressed. That those turnovers all essentially directly resulted in a touchdown. And normally a turnover just means your defense is going to go on the field. Well, you, you, you mentioned big plays. There were a lot of big plays on both sides uh, for Lima and Pickle. Yeah, there wasn't yeah. just uh, one, but we, we certainly had our share. And as a coach, uh, you know, I, as a former coach, I, I always said, hey, you just want to have a chance to win at the end of the game, even with all the turnovers and all the things that maybe didn't go right for us, the things that we didn't have control on, we still had a chance to win at the end of the game. Yeah. And that, that goes mm-hmm. to show you again what you talked about earlier. We're competing mm-hmm. and guys are, 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 are playing all the way through. Yeah, and, and you know, I, uh, how uh, you know we, we came into the game and, and we knew that uh, you know we'd watched the film a lot, senior, and we knew they were going to be an outstanding football team. And so uh, when you know we come into the game, I, I told our, our players, you know, that you can't listen to outside sources. You can't listen to, to people who tell you that you're supposed to win by this much. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this. And so we got to keep things in house. And you know we go in and, and we're very humbly happy if we can win by one point. And anything else other than that, you know, that's that's how you have to progress. And so we came in and, and uh, our, you know, our guys worked at it, you know, throughout the whole week. And, uh, you know, we're, we're healthy. You know, we came out of the game healthy. So I think that's, a, you know, another key to the whole situation that we now now have everybody in the field for this week and we can get better coming up to the Vandalia Butler game. Well, that's a good transition, Coach. Uh, as you talk about the run and the things look clear, uh, we're going to be not only a better team today at practice on Monday, when it comes to Butler on Friday night, we'll be ready to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we'll open up the league portion of the conference. Uh, MVL, uh, everybody gets one non-conference game, and one thing about the MVL is you get to play everybody, and you play everybody starting week two. So Butler comes in, get another opportunity to uh, tee it up here at Friday night, seven o'clock. Uh, what, what can we expect to see against Butler, who has a new coach, mm-hmm. um, but they also have some guys coming back who were some pretty good football players? I think it's, they have a good mix of veterans, similar to what we have. Uh, they've got two or three guys that have been back there and started for them two or three years, just like we have. Uh, I think they got some new new people rolling in. Uh, with the new coach, they got the new system. And uh, so we're able to watch some stuff, I think, a little bit from last year, take something away from last year. But, uh, you know, the tapes this year that we're looking at, you know, are valuable to us because this is the first chance we've got a chance, you know, a chance to see this whole deal. Although I may add this, that some of the offense that they were doing is back when their coach played at Vandalia Butler, oh. which was back in, in the uh, Quinn Pitcock era. And so uh, we, we, do, we do have a couple of those, you know, nuggets from back then, from when, you know, Steve Pelfrey and all those guys were, were down there coaching. So those are a couple things that we can share with it. Uh, the, the two films that we've saw so far, they do have a guy understanding 
center and they do have a fullback running. So, but they do other things and they've always been able to do other things also. So it's kind of a, a, a wide variety of offense, but, but the, the focus is a little bit different. Coach, you, you, you talk about, you know, films back into 97 and, you know, that's, those are back or back in the 90s. Those are back in, uh, in the early 2000s, like when VHS was yeah. around. How often, I'm, I'm sure there are people really interested to know, how, how often do you have to pull some of those old films out? To, do you refer to some of those sometimes as to kind of when, when, a, when, a, when a coach might have coached at a certain area or a, yeah. a team? Do you, do you pull still, those out occasionally? Well, if, if, if need be. Uh, I know last year uh, when the wing T, last year and two years ago, actually when the wing T, you know, resurrected, uh, you know, we were pulling films out, you know, from way back and, and watching, you know, pulling VCRs out and, and, <laughs> and firing them up from there. I think, uh, you know, we also have this. Uh, there's some other films that we do, but we do, we have the VCRs ready to roll. And uh, most of the time, it's nice that we can get them onto the computer, you know, and go that way so your remotes work and everything like that. But there, there are a few occasions. Coach, before we talk about Butler and what we could see, you know, uh, the message is you, as you get into your, your, your team, you, you, okay, hey, uh, everything you've always been in some week by week basis, okay, mm -hmm. hey, we, we learned from Lima, we've got some things we got to go. How do we get ready for Butler? Uh, well, you know, that's exactly what you said. We went down to fundamentals. You know, you look at the thing and, uh, you know, what caused this to happen? Well, you know, you got to work on your ball security. You got to work on your tackling. You got to work on your angles. You got to work on conditioning. All those things are involved. And so it, it, the the reminder is and the wake up call, so to speak, is that, that you can't get tired of fundamentals. You cannot get tired of fundamentals because those are the things when, when push comes to shove, when it comes to the end, those are the things that get you through the tough times. The fundamentals that get you through tough times. Make that make that last minute tackle. You know, you know, get that last block. You know, don't let that guy come inside on you. We know even if you're tired. Those are the type of things. So, so that's 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 what we're hammering. You know, we we always want to be one and zero for the week, and uh, th that's never going to change. That's how you got to do it. Coach, you're you're. Uh, we talk about Butler, and we, we don't need to get into too much of the particulars because, as you said, they got a new coach with new things. But what can people expect to see offensively and defense? Defensively, just generally from from Butler. Right? Well, a tailback off, a tailback orientated offense, a little bit of a, a little bit with some offensive line pulling. Uh, defensively, they run a defense that's fairly popular that everybody's utilizing right now. Uh, that's a, a three down lineman with the full with the two tackles kind of pinching in a little mm -hmm. bit, and then two players walking back and forth, kind of a three four type defense. Uh, so I, I think that's you know that's generally what we've seen in the films that we've watched. Uh, Coach, uh, we certainly uh, we know that uh, we'll be back ready to go on Friday, and we, we, we certainly wish you luck um, uh, as you uh, do all your preparations for the Aviators this week. Uh, we'd like to talk about our senior features this week. Yeah, two guys, uh, you know, two guys had a big game on on Friday night against Lama Carson Hawk, who had a big touchdown uh, pass that uh, put the team back actually in that first uh, surge where we took the lead again, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Josh Heath, who was uh, our special team's extra point uh, and our kicker kicks our extra points and our kickoffs. Um, both of those guys had big games on Friday night and, and certainly disappointed for the, the team uh, yeah. that we didn't win but those guys really did a good job of putting ourselves best in a position they could the best they could to help us. Oh definitely and, and you know Carson is, is become a leader for us. He's a perfect example of a guy that has that has you know moved up the ladder, moved yes. up the rung and he's now up there and he's uh, one of the leaders and one of the guys we have high expectations of. He also has taken over, uh, you know, tough duties as the uh, long snapper, which is always, you know, you know that, oh, yeah. that, that key key part. Of, Overlooked position yeah, a lot of times. The key part of the deal, and uh, he is he is doing very well in that aspect of it, so I wanted to bring him on. You know, he was able to, you know, catch a touchdown, uh, plus the fact that, uh, you know, he did a great job with our special teams. And then, you know, with Heath, uh, it was a, such a surprise. Heath came up to me uh, last spring, or this past spring asked me if he could you know come and kick and so you know I went out watched him kick for a little bit and he had great potential and he's just worked on his own he comes to the weight room he comes to our practice every day works and the way we have it set up is we don't have a specific special teams time we we pull you out when you least expect it's just like in a game so we can operate a little bit under, under the situation and he's done a fantastic job uh, with the kickoffs and you know what, what, what do you who else can can think about the fact that you go 100% on your extra points you get you kick a field goal, and you know he was in position to make a tackle on the kickoff, and he, he that was what 
everyone was yeah. talking about. Yeah. It was a, the guy wasn't afraid to put his body out there. Not afraid to put his body out there. So uh, I think uh, those two guys were, were you know had a special night, and I wanted to get them on the show. Well, Carson, uh, you know he's been a long part of the program. He's been around. Yeah. His dad's been around. Me and Ball Boy. So. I got to be running out of the shoot for him Friday night. I had to be it just uh, as a senior, pretty special. But the, the guy I, I've noticed in the off season, he's put a lot of time and effort mm-hmm. into it as a leader. But his body, he's really uh, he takes it serious as you would expect him to. And I expect good things from Carson uh, this year. Yes, definitely. And and certainly, uh, you know, the other part is about Josh. He's he's a soccer player, so he's having a split going to practice for in games for for football, and then also soccer. And he's uh, holds a couple records already in soccer. So back that we can get a guy. The guys seem to be pretty accepting of, of bringing a guy in like that for one year. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm not sure how that works, but these guys have really, you know, embraced yeah. that. Well, because he's earned it. He, he gets up every morning and comes. So, like I said, he stays for the whole practice. He was out there for, you know, for the entire practice tonight and uh, puts his work in and he's ready. And he's a highly organized. I had him in class and I, I noticed it then, but he's a highly organized individual and he knows where to put his time. He keeps me posted on what he needs to do in certain things. And you know, and everything, and, and uh, he's just been uh, a, a pleasure to have around. We're very fortunate that we got him, Coach. Uh, we again wish you all the best as we go into conference play and uh, Butler on Friday night. Oh, thank you. We'll be back on part two. We're going to talk to Josh. We're going to talk to Carson. We're going to talk a little bit about what it was like for them coming out of the tunnel on Friday night and what their experiences were when we come back. Welcome to week one of the Bill and Lisa's Coaches Show. I am your host, Chapare, and we are on part two of the show. And uh, right now we're at the senior portion of the program, and these guys are going to introduce their names and the positions that they play. My name is Carson Hawk, and I play receiver. I'm Josh Ethan. I'm the kicker. Josh, I'm going to let you hold it. Um, I, Josh, you're, you're kind of a unique position. You're one of several that we have. There are two sport athletes. You're playing football and, and soccer. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit, but let's talk about just kind of football-wise coming into it this year. What are some of the expectations that you have for your own self? Um, some expectations. Um, and team, of course. Yeah. Uh, personally, I don't want to miss an extra point. That's just a little goal. Um, hopefully make some field goals, help the team. Have the opportunity to put some points on the board for the Indians. Yeah. Okay. All right, Carson. Uh, you, you, you've, uh, you've been around the program for a lot of years in a lot of different capacities. You're a senior now. Well, what are some of the expectations and goals that you have? Because this has been a moment you've been waiting for, having the chance to, uh, to, to uh, lead the team on the field. And, and uh, of course, Friday night you had a big touchdown play. So let's talk a little bit about that for you. What, what's your expectations? I'm just looking forward to actually coming out on Friday nights, competing, and I look forward to coming out every day and being here, practicing, getting better. I look forward to the playoffs. Hopefully, towards the end of the season, we start like picking it up a little more after last week. And I'm just looking forward to getting better. Hopefully, playing at another level. And I'm looking forward to everything so far. You've had a, such a history of pickle football since you've been even a ball boy. You've been around it even before. Before then, with your dad as a as a coach in the program and the junior high, and he's, uh, he's your dad Cletus is our freshman coach, and we're okay. certainly glad to have around him. But what was it like for you Friday night to come out of the tunnel? What was that what was that like for you? It just was a whole different experience than before. Because last year it was always oh we're coming out, but we're coming out to cheer. But now I'm coming out to compete, and I'm coming out to get better, and I'm coming out here to prove my point. Like I'm here, and we're ready to play, and we're out here, and we're not trying to just lay down and let it happen. We're trying to go and win some games. So talk about winning some games. It, tough set back on, on Friday night. Oh, yeah. You got, you got uh, not a lot of time to think about it because you got to bounce back and, mm-hmm. and Butler comes in uh, Friday night here uh, at Alexander Stadium which will be aired on the Indian Nation Station. Uh, talk a little bit about that mindset of getting ready for the next one. Well, at this point, we just take it on the chin and we're going to the next week. I mean, we can't hang our heads. We don't have time to. We just come out here, we get ready to compete, and we always have to give our best no matter what, even if we lost or even if we lose this week or we win this week. We got to take it on the chin and go next week. Okay. Josh, I'm going to pass it to you. And, um, you know, we talked, as, as I mentioned earlier, you're a two-sport athlete. Um, Friday night was really your first taste 
of what Friday Night Lights is different. In you know, the previous Friday night, you had opened up the season at Wirt Stadium, where the Indians played for many, many, many years in soccer and are their goalie, and uh, certainly a, a record-setting goalie here at, at hold a couple records here for pickle for, for soccer, and you decided to jump in the football world. What was it like for you on Friday night? What what was different from Friday Night Lights at Wirt Stadium to Friday Night Lights at Alexander? Uh, the crowd. The crowd was crazy on Friday. And what I've heard from teammates, that wasn't a lot of people. So it's just a different atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Coming out of the shoot had to be, had, you had a, your adrenaline had to be running. It was definitely different. Different feeling. I have to ask you, I videoed it, I saw your first extra point that you kicked as a career, and then I saw your first field goal. Walk me through your mindset as you're, you're, you're getting through uh, setting up yourself to, to, make those, to make those kicks. Just don't miss. Don't miss. Don't miss. What might have been, what people talked about after the game, wasn't the fact that you went four for four on your extra points. It wasn't even the fact that you kicked a 24-yard field goal in your first game. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that you took someone out and you tackled someone. You were in the tackle cow. Yeah. So uh, how, how was that for you when, you, you when the kicker actually gets to tackle somebody? Um, you know, he just cut back and I was the last one. I was there and did my part. Yeah, did your, you did your deal. Well, and Even if I miss him, I slow him down so someone else can. Josh, I think you got the right perspective. Uh, your perfect mi mindset as a, a soccer guy, a football guy, you, uh, the physicality, you kind of embrace mm -hmm. that. And you, you, you do that in the goalie box. If people watch you play, I mean, you get pounded. Yeah. And, and you just bring it to the football field, and it was uh, a great energy. So uh, we wish you well as you continue yeah. to move that on. Third and final question, guys. Uh, I know we're early in the season, but at some point in time down the road, we're going to be graduating. It'll be uh, probably warm days like this, except it'll be the start of summer. It'll be uh, the last. Uh, uh, it'll be the last Friday in May. Talk a little bit about as you walk across stage. What are your thoughts and plans? You may not have any, but what are some things that you may be hoping to do down the road? Uh, um, currently, I don't have any plans, but I'd like to play collegiate sports, no matter what they are, in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Okay, great. Carson, what's uh, some of the things you might be thinking about post high school? Uh, I want to study. Uh, I want to study physical therapy, and I want to go and pursue a career with that. And I'd also like to play football at another level. Okay, great. Well, guys, we certainly wish you guys all the best, and uh, I know you guys will uh, be ready for the Butler Aviators on Friday night. This will wrap up the uh, Coach Bill Nisa Show Week 1. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, this the second game here, the second game will be our first MVL game. It will be a 7 o'clock kickoff here at Alexander Stadium. Tickets are available online or also at the gate with available cash. It will also be posted on the Indian Nation station after the game. Uh, you, can, you can go right to the YouTube page. It will also be attached to different social media websites for Pickle City Schools, so you can get that link and watch the game. Uh, for John, and Carson. I'm your host, Chip Hare. We'll see you next week.